Since the last session of the IPES plenary, so much has happened and so much has changed. May 2019 seems a distant memory of in-person negotiations, late-night deliberations and the triumphant launch of the IPES Global Assessment Report. As the eighth session of the IPES plenary begins today, under very different circumstances, it's important to recall that the last two years are defined as much by our shared successes as by the trials we've endured. The messages of the global assessment, especially that one million species of plants and animals now face extinction, reached further and with greater impact than any environmental report launch that came before. It was taken up, literally on the same day, by the G7 and soon thereafter by the G20. In that same month, IBES experts testified about the findings to the European Commission, the US Congress and the German Bundestag. In the months that followed, countries such as Cambodia, Chile, France and Nigeria adopted new action plans to protect and restore nature, citing IBES and its works as their impetus for these actions. Even the World Economic Forum's Global Risk Report in 2020 listed biodiversity loss in the top five global risks to business for the first time ever. With more than 200 specific impacts already tracked, in every region, at every scale, the global assessment embodies the essence of IBES. Evidence that matters, options that work, and expertise that makes a difference for people and our planet. But the global assessment was just part of the IPES journey since 2019. By March 2020, we announced the first IPES private sector contribution from the Caring Group, owner of brands such as Gucci and Yves Saint Laurent, followed by another announcement of a multi-year contribution from the global fashion retailer H&M. In May 2020, IPES launched its first non-English social media with new channels in both French and Spanish continuing the push to reach key audiences through different media. The first season of the IPES podcast, Nature Insight, was received with great enthusiasm around the world. But May was also the month in which the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 as a global pandemic, a visceral demonstration of how directly our relationship with nature underpins our own well-being. It was a pivotal moment for the credibility of science, evidence, and expertise, and the IPES expert community rose to the challenge. By October, the IBES workshop report on biodiversity and pandemics was published, one of the most scientifically robust examinations of the links between pandemic risk and nature, with cross-disciplinary contributions from 22 of the world's leading experts and drawing on more than 700 sources. Shortly thereafter, it was reported that IBES had been nominated for the 2020 Nobel Peace Prize and had won the 2020 Win-Win Gothenburg Sustainability Award. Last year also saw the conclusion of the IBES IPCC co-sponsored workshop on biodiversity and climate change, the first time that our two global expert communities have ever cooperated at this level. There has also been excellent progress in the ongoing IBES assessments on the sustainable use of wild species, the plural ways of valuing nature, and invasive alien species as well as on the scoping of new IBES assessments. As the countries of the world meet later this year at COP26 of the Climate Convention and COP15 of the Biodiversity Convention, IBES 8 begins at a time when the work of IBES has never been more relevant, more valuable, or more urgent. 2021 is a year of new hope for the world to move beyond the devastation of COVID-19 and to embrace a more sustainable relationship with nature. Transformative change is possible and necessary, but only on the basis of science, evidence, and expertise. The IPES community stands ready to embrace these challenges and to seize the opportunities that 2021 offers. IPES, science and policy for people and nature. <laughs>